So in today's video, I'm answering the age old question. Uh, which is better for wildlife photography? Mirrorless or a DSLR camera? If you've followed my channel for any amount of time, or even if this is your first time here, you'll know, or you know now, that I primarily shoot a Z62 and a D500. So I feel I'm in quite a unique spot, a unique position to answer some of these questions. Now, first things first, both cameras are really good. You can pick up a used D500 for around £500. 700 for one in better condition, and you can buy them brand new with a kit from somewhere like SLR Hut for about £1,300. Depending on the condition, you can pick up a Z62, anything from £1,000 to £1,300. Brand new, you're looking at £1,700, give or take, depending on where you live. When I'm not doing paid client work, my uh, interest is wildlife and landscape photography. And I'm tailoring this whole video for wildlife photographers. So with that in mind, I've come here to one of my local woodlands to photograph the buzzards. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get set up in the usual location. I'm going to shoot an hour on the D500, then an hour on the Z62. I'm going to get some video, get some stills, hopefully get some good action shots. And then I'm going to talk about the pros and cons of each system. Straight away, um, I've been using the Z62 for so long that I just cannot get away with an optical viewfinder. I'm sorry, the monopod is all over the place. I'm not going to have to hold it. I cannot get used to the uh, the optical viewfinder anymore. I'm so used to just having that EVF. Uh, that's what I get. I don't need to check the meter or anything. I just adjust on the fly. And that's... That's the main thing for me. Also, the, uh, the diopter um, on the D500 doesn't go far enough to adjust for my glasses prescription. And I hate shooting my glasses on. Um, so I just have to accept that little bit of, uh, of a blur on the, uh, on the, on the dials and displays. Things that I do really like about the D500 is the uh, the feel of the camera body. It's nice and chunky. Um, if you've watched some of my previous uh, camera reviews, you know I'm not overly keen on the small size of the Z system. Uh, obviously, remedy with the Z8, it's more like a DSLR body. But I do I, I really miss the feel of the D500. Miss that one. The kind of shots I like to get are the uh, bird coming head on down the lens um, or a nice profile shot where you can see the, the sleek form of the bird. All right, so there's a whole lot of action going on right now. We've got the, the buzzards that are circling overhead. I'm pretty sure we've just had a red kite uh, pass over. I didn't manage to get any shots of it though. Unfortunately, here we go again. We're very vocal, we're very active today, and we're getting some decent action shots. So yeah, downsides to using the D500. Um, 20 megapixels, as, even though, trust me, this sensor is great, it, it, it will make a beautiful print. Um, croppability is an issue. Um, when you put this in the 1.3 times uh, crop, mode I think it drops down to a 14 megapixel image Do you know it's still okay it's still good enough for Instagram and Facebook but one time one situation I wouldn't use this for is if I was doing like a uh, magazine style editorial product shoot where I need big megapixels a lot of croppability it just it's, it's just not the, the camera for that kind of work but everything else 
the D500 is absolutely fantastic. Switch to the Z6 II now to shoot for an hour, and uh, straight away, using the EVF, it's just such a smoother workflow than having the, the optical viewfinder. Um, not all people agree, but one of my big hang-ups when switching the mirrorless was the EVF, and now it is one of the, the primary reasons that keeps me shooting these and not the DSLRs. It's just, it's, it's easy just to, you don't have to move your eye from the eyepiece, you can review your images, you can change your settings, you can do everything that you need to do. In the menu system, you can, you can do pretty much everything just through the EVF. It's also a lot brighter than the uh, the D500's Pentaprism, um, which is another added bonus, especially like me, if you're a bit of a blind guess. Personally, I'm having a blast. Uh, I just like being outdoors. Um, but the wildlife doesn't want to play today. It's just, they're just not bothered. Just sat on the perch, squawking away, living their best life. Right guys, well unfortunately rain stopped play, um, got completely washed out and couldn't finish the video in the field. So I realised while I was putting this video together I didn't actually touch on one of the most important things and that is the comparative autofocus systems of the two cameras. Now first off both are really really good, the D500 shares the same system as the flagship D5, Nikon's old top of the line sports camera. And I feel like in the field there isn't much to separate the two systems, they both work really well, they're both accurate, they both uh, track quite well. Um, there are a few issues with mirrorless autofocus where it will go to the background and it's really difficult to reacquire the subject. Um, but a simple, just keep your thumb on the wheel and you can correct that pretty easy. Do feel the Z6 II autofocus system is that little bit better though. I think it's a little bit faster and it's also a little bit stick. But this is very, very marginal. I feel I get more keepers from the Z6 II than I do with the D500. I feel the Z6 II tracks a little bit better than the D500, but I'm also very aware that when I'm shooting on the 150-600, uh, that becomes an equivalent 900 millimeter uh, field of view. Obviously that narrower field of view makes it a little bit more difficult to keep the bird in the frame all the time. Where the Z6 II really pulls away from the D500 is when it comes to video autofocus. It is a country mile ahead of any of the Nikon DSLRs. It's not even comparatively close. The, the, the seeking and the pulsating that you get from a, a Nikon DSLR video autofocus is just, un, it's completely unusable in most scenarios. For something like this, it would be fine, like sat, single point, talking head video, it'll work a treat. But for wildlife videography, for any kind of professional videography, it's manual focus on nothing. In general, I feel the, the Z6 II is just, it's it's ahead of the D500, obviously with it being a newer camera in every respect. The image quality from the Z6 II is higher, the noise performance, obviously from a full frame sensor compared to a crop sensor, is better. I think the, the camera handles high ISO uh, shots better, I think the shadows look better. I think it's just all round a better image quality. I've also I mentioned in the video that I do prefer the workflow of the Z6 II to the D500 and pretty much any other DSLR at this point. One area where the D500 sinks the Z6 II though is in battery performance because you're not having the EVF or the back screen on all the time. From a D500 I can go out and I can shoot all day on a single battery, no worries. On a Z6 II Depending on what I'm doing, a couple of hours, I was out yesterday, I, took, I only took 200 and something photos, most of them crap, um, very little video and it drained a whole battery in three hours. So that's something to be uh, something to keep in mind if you go with a Z6 II, you're going to need some kind of power delivery, extra batteries, 
or the ability to, char to charge those batteries in the field. So all in all, does it even matter if you go mirrorless or DSLR? And it's, 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 it's tricky to conclude this because it's completely down to personal preference and what you are doing with these cameras. If you've got no interest in video whatsoever, then just stick with a DSLR. If you're interested in video and other forms of production, doing other things, then obviously this is the, the mirrorless system is going to be the way to go for you. But at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter that much. It's just a tool, it's a device that helps you achieve something, it's a problem solving device. It doesn't really matter which one you use just as long as you use one, if that makes any sense whatsoever, because I am, I don't know anymore. I give up. So yeah, I'm going to call it a day because I am exhausted. I will leave links to all my kit in the description as usual. If you do buy anything, please be aware they are affiliate links. So I will earn a very, 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 very small commission on anything you purchase on Amazon. It's almost not worth doing, but every little helps, as you say. And so with that in mind, I'll also leave a link to my Kofi page. If you want to chuck us a few quid, buy us a pint, that would be absolutely exceptional. Um, like and comment in the video. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.